Welcome back to Gig Harbor. Today we're gonna to talk about the role and the position of the top hand. The role of the top hand is very important because it anchors the blade into the water so that you can move past the blade. Oftentimes paddlers do funky things with their hand. They let it shoot up, they cave it in, they let it go out, but what we do with the top hand is supposed to be getting on top of the water, anchoring it position so that you can move up and over it. We can't move water. The water that we're paddling on is thousands and thousands of tons. We're using it. We're bearing our blade so that we can get past it. So the top hand, everything about it is helping you do that. Let's look at Ben's top hand. So we can't see it from behind, we don't know exactly the angle. But what can we see here? The wrist is in front of the elbow, and I know there's a splash right there, so we might not be able to tell, but I'm pretty sure his elbow is also slightly in front of or at least in line with his shoulder, with his body's rotation. So his elbow's not way back here. So this is a good thing. What about the height of his top arm? I'd say it's between his ear and chin. I think that's a good height for Ben. I think that he could potentially have it a little higher, but instead I would actually rather him just have his front hand higher. So just for definition's sake, back arm, top arm, front arm, soon to be bottom arm. His elbow is what I want to look at. Because sometimes people have different like lengths of forearms and stuff. And uh, some some people, when they go to the water, that's going to come up. But he, what I'm really looking at and what I want you guys, I'm training you to look at, is his elbow. Right there, he gets to a relatively good spot. But he skips it. So a lot of you do this, you get to the point where you should be at, but then you just skip, you just go straight up like that, okay? Right here, that looks pretty good, right? Because of all the reasons we talked about with Ben. When he goes to the water, what happens there? Same thing as red, yeah. I could talk all day about like having a pretty setup, but if you just throw it out the window the second you go to the catch, your setup doesn't do much for you. What I like is that your elbow and your hand are both forward. That's really good. And what's really good, guys, look at the, the level he set right there with his elbow. He does not shoot his hand up. So when we look at people in their singles, you'll see that Jack actually pulls forward in front of his speed group. And when you wonder why, I would bet it's because of how he uses his top hand and gets good leverage. And you can get even more speed and efficiency if your hands were higher and more over the water. And then your fulcrum point goes from low here to up here, you get more reach versus right here. So we don't want to go too high because we want to maintain that rigidness with our elbow. But if we go too low, we're losing some potential stroke there. I just like the K4 video because it's easy to get a few different strokes compared to each other. All right, let's look at the top hand kayakers. I know it looks different, but it is the same type of idea and mechanics when it comes to uh, physics. So Thomas is talking about you can apply more power through a straight arm. And the idea behind that is that if you're bending any part of your limbs before you're taking it out of the water, what's happening is we call it a, a leakage of power or a break in the chain. So from the hand all the way down to your knee, it's like a chain link. And the second you bend a muscle, a small tiny muscle compared to your legs, it's kind of trying to take some of the, the shock, so to speak, and some of the power out of it, but it is not helpful if your hips aren't the one that's driving. There's just supposed to be ropes. Whether you're in kayak or canoe, vertical means straight up and down. Okay, and actually the best power connection to the water is gonna be when it's vertical like this and there's not a lot of slippage. Kayaking, there's definitely gonna be some angle, but canoers, you cheat yourselves by entering the water like this versus straight up and down. You're connected, your arms are connected, 
you're keeping a safe position in your shoulder. It's kind of like open. And then you're like, I'm about to get to the water. Boop. Oh, okay. And you just like push your arm over because you know you're supposed to be there. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see the crunching. That's where the rotation comes from. But Emma's talking about if you bend your arm, it also changes the angle like this. So if you keep your arm bent through the recovery, it's going to ruin your catch and you're not going to have a proper catch because you know your, your body knows it needs to be straight up and down. And so you shoot it forward like this. And if you even are catching with a bent arm, then you're, you're at an angle and you're not vertical. So either way, it's not good if your top arm is not straight in the recovery. It's gonna be bent, I think, naturally, to get out of the water, but it's going to need to get straight as soon as possible. Let's talk about what Aaron is doing with his top hand. Is it working for him? Is there something different he should be doing? We all know that we're not moving water when we paddle, right? Do you think that you can move that? Do you know how heavy that water is? No, you are using the water to move you, little old you and your boat, your 12 kilo boat past the lake, right? So if your hand thinks that it's just scooping away and that's why you're moving the boat forward, what's gonna happen is the boat's gonna drop and you're actually gonna be pressing it down into the water. That top hand, just like Benji said, it's meant to hold, he was talking about pressing up, it's meant to hold in place so that you can press your body forward and, your, and as a fruit of that, your body's gonna come up. But so many of us are putting our paddle in the water and pressing down, putting our paddle in the water, pressing down, and we're losing the entire mechanic of the stroke because we're not thinking of it the proper way. We're not planting and then pulling past. What is this top hand doing? And he's letting the fulcrum point come really low and he's waiting to pull from that leverage point until it's too late and you're gonna see the boat drop. Okay, so he puts the, the paddle in the water. That's the point where I want you guys to be pulling past the boat, but instead, his power is coming, he's pulling up his paddle, and his boat, instead of shooting up, it kind of goes down. We're gonna put our top hand in the water. That is supposed to be an anchor point, and his whole right side of his body, with support of his left side, is gonna try to pull back. The canoe is always gonna have some sort of surge, obviously, because per stroke. But how do you guys know if it's doing it correctly. It's a smoother transition and the boat's not gonna stop in between strokes. It should never stop. The momentum should continue to be driven forward. There's a lot of things that go into it. We talk a lot about the driving of the bottom knee and the, way, the timing of the return of the hip. But um, today we're just talking about the top hand. So just know that it all connects to that. I like that. It's pretty good. She does come up on the elbow a little bit, but look, she stays rigid at the catch, I want you guys to, in kayaks to maintain that rigidness during the power part of the stroke. 